Okay. So coarsening is something that we try to avoid, but uh, particles grow from small to large, while at the same time there's not much increase in relative density, right? That's coarsening. And generally what people find is the particles smaller than average tend to disappear. At the same time, those particles that are larger than average would tend to getting bigger, grow. Okay. So here we are some earlier scientists derived a, a model dr over dt that's the rate of particle size growth r for radius of your particles dr over dt is a linear growth rate for the particle radius is something like this again r is radius of your particle r a v means average particles okay R T V M P Z O K R R typical number, and then if you plot it, it becomes something like this. Qualitative. I'm not plugging any number, but qualitatively, we would have something like this. One, the minus one over one over R would flip the curve, and then I'm moving up a little bit. Make sense? So what essentially it tells us is. If your radius is average radius, this term become, if your radius is average radius, this whole term become zero, which means you do not change in size. The particle size does not change with time. On the other hand, if you are larger or smaller, it will change. And the KR is a so-called Cosinian read constant. Let's don't go into the detail. And causing it over time would satisfy what people generally study, observed something like this, a parabolic, a kind of like a parabolic relationship. The average squared versus initial average is follows this relationship. But anyway, based on this, if my r initially radius is larger than average, which means 1 over r would be smaller than 1 over rav, and then this term would be, well, if r is larger than rav, this term would be positive, which means the particle would grow. That's what we draw, right? On the other hand, if our AV is smaller, our AV R is smaller than our AV, I would have this whole thing be negative. The particles would get smaller and smaller, eventually disappear. That's what we said here. Okay, but overall, over time, it the whole thing may also change a little bit. Follows kind of like a parabolic relationship. Okay. Causing kinetics based on this. Kinetics, which means how fast does the radius increase, would increase with higher surface tension and as well as higher equilibrium pressure. What does that mean? If your particles has larger surface energy, it has a greater tendency to shrink its surface energy. As a result, the particles tend to cause quickly to reduce the surface energy. At the same time, if P0 means the high vapor pressure, high vapor pressure means it has a greater tendency to go through the vapor phase. The transport is faster. Make sense? Higher vapor pressure means the transport through the gas phase would be faster. And in that case, you also have higher green growth or coarsening rate. Make sense? Okay, so let's look at some micrograph image. I'm not sure what material this is. I have to dig out. But essentially, you see, initially, fine green over time, 
some greens get larger, some green appear to be, you look at here, getting smaller, and then eventually everything grows and grows. And towards the end, you will find that the green boundary become pretty flat, and everything more or less on the same order of sizes. Okay? And uh, if green boundary is ideal and free of these defects, pores, inclusion, and uh, solutes, we would have the green growth roughly follows these types of relationship. The average square minus the average at the time zero follows kind of still parabolic relationship. T constant here the whole thing is constant okay let's do, don't get into the detail the surface energy the volume for local probably atom and uh, other constants the actual green growth or causing in situation is complicated by non-ideal system you have solutes foreign atoms dissolved in your material. You have second phase impurities. You also have porosities. So this model, people have to revise it. Instead of having two here, you can empirically fit. People put an M here. The range of costs around two, from one something all the way to maybe three. Sometimes people observe so-called abnormal green growth. Abnormal green growth, which means certain greens grow excessively, much, much quicker, much, much larger than all the other greens, and which is called abnormal green growth. And we have one example, which is very large aluminum oxide or alumina grow in fine aluminum, something like this. You see, this side is the typical green. Everything, well, more or less comparable. But suddenly, I have a huge, huge green. This is called abnormal green growth. Abnormal. Suddenly, one green or few greens grow significantly, one order of two order magnitude larger than the other. <laughs> Obviously, you do not want this because in terms of mechanical uniformity, here it's very different from here, right? Quite often you want your material, you sell it, you want your material to behave more or less the same hardness, same toughness, instead of one region much harder than the rest, okay? The origins, despite all these years, are still not completely clear. Okay, <laughs> okay. It's essentially, I said nothing, but uh, it's due to anomaly in green boundary mobility and the interface and isotropy. Some of the interface is not the same versus the other interfaces. And uh, to control or to try to avoid such things, abnormal green growth, you would try sometimes to introduce dopant to reduce the green boundary mobility, make it uh, slightly slower so that, okay, at least uh, I can drag it down, not everything, not one local go very fast. And uh, you also try to eliminate so-called liquid phase because liquid by its faster diffusion, faster mass transport will if the liquid distribution is not uniform, you may imagine certain region it grows tremendously larger than the rest if the liquid is not uniformly distributed. Okay, and the liquid actually will sometimes not distribute uni uniformly because liquid also wants to shrink together to reduce the surface tension. 